Of course, here the big news is going to be a potential date for Flight 10. It's the 24th. It's no earlier than the 24th. I'm a bad YouTuber. I'm not going to tell you to stick around till halfway through the video after we play an ad or something. No. Uh, currently not the 24th, but stick around if you want to see if that's realistic or, lot, or not. Is that a good compromise? Starting off with some work there at the old OLM, the old LM. I guess we could say, uh, moving some vaporizers around. You saw the work platform being raised up underneath. Here we've still got 37 on the pad, but we are starting to take it apart, get it off the pad here, starting by taking off the quick disconnect lines there. A lot of work, like little ants crawling all over the ship. Of course, after that, you got to get it off the pad, lifting it over with the chopsticks, and we're going to swing it over. Where's the drones? A lot of times you'll see the drones. I saw some interesting comments uh, down before. Somebody left some notes on how we might be able to reduce some of this glare. So I'm going to pick up some of those uh, night filters and see if we can't adapt them to these cameras. Of course, the trick is going to be sometimes it's not night, but uh, I appreciate that. I, I do always look for ways to make things better and appreciate you all giving us some ideas down below. I don't know everything. Um, so always want to make things better. Here behind the oh whoa i thought that was a i thought that was a lens flare or something but it's actually the moon that is some delightful telephoto compression with the moon wow okay so here ship 37 coming back it finished its test they got that spin prime and uh, it is coming back to the production site the label said hopefully for the last time if everything goes well we hope to see had ah, delightful underglow we hope to see the Booster rollout. They need to demod the pad. They need to roll out the booster. They need to roll out the ship. They need to make us a full stack, and they need to launch this thing. Today is Saturday, the 16th, and if they're shooting for Sunday, the 24th, no earlier than, I'm going to say that over and over again, they got quite a bit of work to do. And here, interestingly, you're not seeing it in the video yet, but there's a big tropical depression sort of forming and raining like crazy all over Starbase. So a very important fact, like a blocking fact here, a blocking task, is going to be how that tropical depression affects their preparation schedule. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, gl I'm glad the Starship looks nothing like the Cybertruck. I don't think those sharp angles are great for like mock effects or whatever, but uh, that was a, a fortuitous framing there. I know there's going to be some uh, Cybertruck fans who like that. I, I, look, if you gave me one, I would probably drive it around the block once and then put it up for sale. Uh, I have some other vehicles I think I would prefer than the Cybertruck. But, but lots of people like it. That's fine. People drive Mazdas. They can do that too, like whatever they want to do. Uh, anyways, Ship 37 coming all the way back around the backside. It's going to be really interesting. One day we expect they'll go right in the doors in the Gigabay right here instead of having to do that uh, old button hook maneuver returning to the launch site but here it's taking the circuitous route around Mega Bay 1 coming through the back which used to be Meridi uh, Remedios actually not Meridios and getting into Mega Bay 2 so here uh, interestingly you don't see that very often they lifted a scissor lift out I'm not entirely sure what was going on with that was it on the platform maybe I'm gonna check with the operators and see if that platform was still up but in any event there goes the crane da -da 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 -da. that's the crane moving noise and here details on the demodification this is the adapter the star stool if you will it's not very stooly it's like the, the olm itself looks more like a stool than the adapter but uh, getting that out of the way because the booster does not fit in the ship adapter hole Back in the background. Oh, yep, yeah, there in the middle. It's a raptor. You can see the top end. Oh, wait, is that two? There are two raptors, and might I surmise that one is a vacuum and one is a uh, sea level because of the different heights there. But, interesting. Certainly, hopefully, please not for Ship 37. I hope that those are going to another ship. Uh, we haven't heard anything, and SpaceX did release that information that uh, was starting to put out the notices and stuff like that. But... In any event, hopefully those are for another ship. Got piles and piles of rebar here. Concrete skeleton bones, I guess. But they are really starting to work on getting the concrete in. They did the big pilings. Look, you can see all the tops of the pilings sticking up, and they're getting ready to do that massive slab. Look at how, I mean, you know, you got a six, seven, eight-foot hole there. 
Those guys' heads, the tops of their helmets are underneath the ground level before. Possible Star Factory parts. They look like parts for a water slide. I mean, they got water slides out there. They got the uh, deluge system, at least. Cryogenic sump pump loaded. Well, I mean, kind of loaded. It was put next to the truck. I think if that truck drives off, it's, it's not going to be great. This, <laughs> this label literally just has two pipes. I love it. Now that's interesting. A possible booster breakover tool? Huh. Might that be a way to take a booster that is vertical and lay it horizontal, potentially for transport, potentially for transport to the cave, potentially because they start to need to, or they need to start getting boosters that they've built here over to the cape before the cape's production capacity is spooled up. Interesting, though. One very small world where Blue Origin is slightly ahead of SpaceX. They have a they have a huge booster breakover fixture that we see at Port Canaveral and some of the flyovers and stuff like that. If you missed the flyover from a couple days ago, we got some stubby chopsticks with some. Uh, <laughs> apparently, there's a lot of Fraggle Rock fans because like the primary comment from the previous video was about the doozers and, and work your cares away or waste your care, whatever it is, um, in the previous video. But uh, they've got a little bit of scaffolding there. There at the top, you can see the little doghouse looking thing that's the Lox cutie on this side. You can see some hinges, pivot points there to let that thing move forward and back. I, hmm. I wonder, it, it's always like a, a hinge motion, right? It's never a sliding motion, like you'd put the disconnect on rails and you would just slide it straight linearly into the side you always see the hinge where it sort of leans back or un unfolds or maybe it's a it's a set of hinges that make a linear motion i wonder why why the design goes one way or the other maybe some mechanical engineers in the comments could help me out with that one but it what are the number not rails like rails with a little cog system or something that just slides it back anyways Hey, this is across the street, and this is new. You see the big drilling rig there that is starting to make some pilings over here at the, like, literally right off the beach. You can see the beach sand dunes in the background where that air separation plant is going in. But this is right across from the turning circle. It's on the other side of the street from the pad. Over back at Massey's, we saw this last video, but there's Booster 13's aft section again. Uh, just like rocket plumbing gore, I think would be the right thing to call it at this point. But removing those engines. 18.1 test tank. I was watching Starbase Live uh, last night. If y'all don't know, that's our 24-7 stream. And there was some testing happening on that test tank. I have it labeled 18.1 here. I, th I think it has a couple names and nothing official, but just testing yeah. out some of those uh, designs. There's some cryo stations and the booster cuties in the back. So you can see, yep, yes, perfect enhance editor. Thank you. Uh, you can see the two cuties there at the angle like pad two has right now. Popping back over to pad one, demodding continues. I guess technically that is a subset of work on the OLM continuing, but uh, continue to move those pieces. There's the ship adapter that they used moving back to stories, pop quiz. Will this be ready? Will this be used again? Will we see this make an appearance for Ship 38? Or will Massey's be operational by then? I guess we are going to find out. Whether or not this ever makes an appearance again, or if it just becomes a uh, piece of hardware that sits back in the yard forevermore until it's scrapped. Now here, another important piece. They've got to get these booster clamps out of the way. That light could definitely use a filter. A little mechanical thumb that we can put in front of it to block it off. But uh, they have to put those clamps back in. Here's some propellant tankers lined up. Still, gosh, that's super inefficient backup, but I don't think it's going to be changed at this point. They've got more stations. They've been sort of adding and adding and adding stations there. But look at all those trucks lined up. And it's not a pull-through. Wow, that's an interesting parking job. It's not a pull-through setup where you're just line of trucks and the next truck just drives forward and the truck behind it pulls up and hooks up. Uh, they have them backing up to those spots, so it slows down the flow just a little bit. More work. I mean, more and more equipment at the air separation plant over here. There is the drilling rig. You can see the big rebar cage. We've been watching this with our cameras uh, from our North Beach position. And the seas are getting some up-close shots here from the side of the road. But making progress. 
you know SpaceX, they don't sit around. They're not going to, oh, well, three years from now, we may have this air separation plant done. Uh, well, three years from now, they'll probably be rebuilding parts of the air separation plant because they didn't like how they did it the first five times. But uh, certainly the law of apparent progress is in effect. If we hop back to the booster breakover here, it looks like. Yeah, we hop back to, to that thing. It'll be really interesting to see if they do any work. Is that just a Pathfinder or something? Apparently we've got that 18.1 test tank. See, here I saw it on SBL, so I sort of knew it was coming, but I didn't actually know it was going to be in this video. That's fine. You know the drill. It's like partly, hopefully, interesting commentary. Hopefully it's not too technical so more people can follow along. You know, I toss a little jokes in and stuff like that. Some of you don't think they're jokes, but that's okay. It seems like they're cleaning Star Factory every day. Like they are always cleaning this factory off. I, I don't know. Huh. They're figuring out the best way to clean it off. Hey, here we have ship 39 and 42 in the Star Factory here. The interesting thing is that when you get up to ship 39, you get out of the, might I say, unlucky if not cursed, uh, block two ship designs, which have not done very well. But ship 39 there is the first in the line for that new block three, factor three, whatever you want to call it, design. And we peek through a couple different uh, areas here. Here's a nose cone lifting jig. You can tell because of the cons concentric but slightly differently sized rings. Tool weight tells you how much it is. There is, a, what does it say? Bay 10, it had another label I couldn't quite read on the side. Bay 10 lifter or something like that. But you can see how a nose cone would sort of fit in there, and it has a it's a specialized load spreader. Actually, thank you, SpaceX. Uh, there's how the lifting jig fits around a nose cone. You have the smaller part up on top, the wider part down on the bottom, because, of course, the, the nose cone is, well, it's a cone. It's right there in the name. And uh, you have the attachment point, so you're not pinching it. You're pulling up straight on the nose cone. And here is the nose cone actually being lifted. How cool is that? Like, sometimes these just feel like drive-bys, like, oh, it's a nose cone. Okay, cool, it's a nose cone through a window. Hey, look, another nose cone through a window. Uh, but here to see some of these actual operations in play, like in operation, in, in effect, I guess. Underway is what an operation should be. Uh, that's actually kind of cool, seeing that. So, ship 39, probably still a pretty good ways away from rolling out. Remember, they're not completely stacked in there. But in any event, y'all, we may be about a week away from flight. We're going to check back on Monday. Make sure you don't miss Starbase Update. We'll see how that tropical depression affected the work cadence. Is it going to slip? Is it going to go that Sunday? I don't know. I guess there's one way to find out. We'll be here covering it for you. This was a Starbase summary. My name is John. They're Raptors, not Merlins. And we will see you nerds later. <laughs>